Hey nerds, Todd Simmons coming back at you with a little automation. Uh, so I got a couple of requests uh, from people that, that know I do a lot of uh, Wi-Fi type automation. Uh, and uh, a couple of people asked me, hey man, you know, throw up something on uh, what you're doing with uh, Cisco 9800s uh, to gather some data. So I thought I'd start with an intro uh, on how to use NetMiko to connect to a 9800 controller. So there's other options out there, uh, but quite frankly, NetMiko is the best in my opinion. Uh, as far as wanting to be able to connect to the controller, grab data off of it, uh, which that's simple. I mean, you could just use an SSH client like Secure CRT for that. But if, if you want to take that data and put it into a structure, um, NetMiko is wonderful because it uses uh, certain plugins. So that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, I am going to provide some of these files on my GitHub for you. Uh, my GitHub is Todd H. Simmons, and I'll, I'll have a link to it uh, in this uh, particular repo. It'll just be Todd Omation that'll have that information. So uh, starting out, um, talking about NetMiko. So NetMiko is an SSH client that was built by Kirk Byers. Um, been doing it, oh, probably like eight years now. So, and he uses NetMiko uh, for all types of connectivity. It's just not to Cisco. Uh, it, it'll work to just about any vendor out there, quite frankly. Um, I'm gonna be using NetMiko to establish that connection to a Cisco 9800 controller. Uh, I'm gonna run a command on it. Uh, the command that I'm gonna run is going to be uh, show AP summary. I have written a specific text FSM template. There's not a bunch of text FSM templates for the 9800s. So I'm going to share with you my text FSM template for that specific uh, command, uh, show AP summary. Uh, and then that'll take the data and put it into a data structure for you. Uh, and then I'm going to write it to JSON. So not a long video, uh, really, really simple, uh, but just kind of want to give you a basis. And then I'm going to show you a bunch of other things that we can do with the 9800s. Um, so what are you going to need? Well, of course, uh, you're going to need something to, to write your Python. I'm going to be using, as usual, VS Code. Uh, you'll want to install NetMiko, just a simple pip install NetMiko. The nice thing when you install NetMiko, because NetMiko has TextFSM uh, built into it, uh, it'll automatically install TextFSM for you in all of the libraries uh, from NTC. Um, now, of course, if you're going to test this out in a real life situation, you'll need access to a controller. Uh, and specifically, this is for the 9800 or the Catalyst version of Cisco controllers, the new one. This will not work. Uh, with an AROS, so if you've got an 8540 or 5520, 3504, 2504, 5508, any of those model numbers, um, this particular tutorial is not for you um, because this is going to be specifically for the iOS or the Catalyst uh, 9800s. So real quick on NetMiko, I, I, you know, I'll show it to you over here in my uh, text FSMs, uh, not text FSM, sorry, my, my code screen, my VS code screen, a couple of things. When you're using NetMiko, uh, NetMiko uses this connect handler to do its importing, and it's just going to handle the connection. It's pretty simple. Uh, so from NetMiko import connect handler, uh, you'll know device. This is important. So the device is actually the device that you're going to connect to. Um, there's some things in here that NetMiko is going to use. So this host obviously is going to be the IP address or the DNS name of the controller that you're gonna to connect to. Then you're gonna need a username and a password for it. Uh, and then the device type here is Cisco IOS. So if someone looked at the text FSM stuff and said, well, you know, shouldn't that be WLAN? No, it's only WLAN if you're using the old ROS. So when we're using the new Catalyst 9800, that's an IOS, Cisco IOS operating system. So that does need to be Cisco IOS. So. With Connect Handler, it's really, really simple to get your connection. So uh, I have this one line right here that says net connect equals Connect Handler, and then I have the star star args. Uh, that needs to change because it's not args anymore, so we'll do that star star device. What that's going to do is it's going to make the connection. Here's your connection right here. Right? This is establishing your connection. Now, we haven't made the connection. Uh, this just calls the connection. So what this says is when we call net connect, use the NetMiko connect handler, which is going to SSH by default into this device. And because we're using the star star, uh, some of you may be familiar with this. A lot of people call it KW args uh, and it's keyword arguments, which means that we're going to use keys of a dictionary 
is those words and pass in the values as arguments. So if you've ever heard KW args, this would be an example of KW args. So star star device just means that I'm going to send all this device information into Connect Handler. Once I send that information in, right, NetMiko takes over for me. So the actual command to make everything happen is going to be output equals, so I'm going to go get data. I'm going to use NetConnect. So here it goes. I'm calling this NetConnect method in, and I'm going to send a command. The command is show AP summary. So notice it's in quotes. Um, this is just a very basic command inside uh, the controller, but I have to use this send command function. Uh, I tell it what command I want it to send, and then notice I've got some uh, additional command line arguments here, and I want to talk about these. So read timeout equals 20. By default, NetMiko is going to wait about six seconds, and after six seconds, it's going to look for that host name. Again, if it does not see the host name within six seconds, it's going to assume that there was an error. Well, there's a problem with that. Um, in controllers, because sometimes controllers, the output takes way longer than six seconds. So you can use the read underscore timeout uh, command line option for connect handler, and you can extend that out. So I've extended it to 20 seconds. Now, it's not going to wait 20 seconds and then just finish. If it finishes in 10 seconds, it's going to be done. This is just going to make sure that it waits long enough. So if you have a command like show text support, you'd probably want to change that to like 600 because those commands take a long time to run. Next thing, we're going to say use text FSM equals true because I want to use a text FSM template. Okay. Now, the text FSM template that I want to use is not included in the standard text FSM package. So I wrote my own, which I'm going to show you next. But in order to do that, I have to tell them where it's at, or what I or connect handler. So I say the text FSM template that I want to use is Cisco underscore iOS underscore show underscore AP underscore summary dot template. I wrote that file. I will include that file on my GitHub for you. Okay. Um, and then afterwards, it's not in here. Okay. But I want to show you this SSH connection is going to maintain its status or be open until we tell it to stop. Oh, I got to be in the screen. NetConnect dot disconnect. And this will terminate our SSH session uh, with the controller. Uh, as you'll see, I'm going to take that information uh, and I want to write it to AP underscore summary dot JSON. Now, here's the thing. You might be like, well, how can you write that straight to JSON? Because I use TextFSM and I wrote a template for that, it's going to take all of that AP data and put it in a dictionary for me automatically. Now I just have to write it to JSON. So that's what I'm going to do here uh, with the open AP underscore summary dot JSON. Uh, open it for writing, of course. Uh, use the UTF-8-8 encoding uh, and then just write it to JSON. So uh, let me show you what we've got. So this is all the Python that you need to do that. So let me show you real quick the template. And I, I don't want to jump too far into the template. I'm going to provide it for you. But the template is very simple, right? So TextFSM templates. And, and I'm going to do a longer video on TextFSM because it's, it's so powerful. With my TextFSM, uh, I create these values. And these values are just going to be the value just identifies that it's going to be a variable. After the value, I like to use, and most people do like to use that I've seen, a all caps name for that particular variable. And then we're going to identify the regular expression pattern. So now notice that, that I just said the AP name doesn't include any spaces uh, in mine, and that's what the slash uppercase S plus sign means. It's got a, at least one non uh, white space character. So this is my text FSM template. And this is the order that it's going to be in. Now, I don't want to get too in-depth. If you're using a Cisco IOS Catalyst uh, controller, a 9800 version, this template will work for you. Uh, I'm going to go into detail a little bit later. Uh, but some of my videos have been really long, and I'm, I'm trying to shorten them up and do them in maybe smaller pieces so they're easier uh, for everybody out there to consume. But this is what my template looks like. Okay, so with the template, uh, it has all of this data here. So I'm looking at the AP name. I'm getting the slot, the model, okay? 
the Ethernet MAC, the radio MAC, its location, the country, its IP, and its state. Not state that it's located, but state, right? Is it registered or not? So a lot of people might say, well, what's the output look like from show AP summary anyway? Well, I'm glad you asked because this is the raw output of what it would look like. So you, it's going to tell you how many APs there was in. This is the raw output. So here's your AP name, your slots, your AP model, right? All of that information that we were looking for is going to be located here. So notice there's a lot of them here. So to go through 600 and something lines of text data, well, let's see how many it was. What was it? Uh, 620 lines of text data, including uh, everything at the top. I want to take that and turn that into JSON so I can gather that data. There's something that I want to do with that uh, AP summary, and I'll show you what we can do. Uh, that's what this Python file is going to do. So when I run this, it's just going to, to, to take this output here. Okay, um, Because I use the textfsm versus equals true statement here, it's automatically going to apply it using this textfsm template that I have specified. Okay, uh, and this is how it's going to set that up using my data or how it's going to search for it, sorry, here. So as you can see, uh, it's got to begin with and it's going to start with the AP name. So when we look at the actual file, we know it does. It begins with the AP name. So using TextFSM, um, this white space is what we're going to have to identify and we're going to have to look for these particular items using it to notice that I do. So I say after AP name, there's going to be a bunch of white space. Okay. And then there's going to be a slot and that slot is going to be a digit. Okay. So after I run this command, it's going to go get this exact data. It's going to change this data using this file, this template, into a JSON data structure. Okay, so I've, I've already ran it, so I'm not actually going to run it now. The code works just fine. Um, and this is the output that I'm going to get. So nice, nice output here. So now I have a data structure in a JSON format that has every single one of my APs listed. It's got all of my, it's got my model number, my EMAC, my RMAC, EMAC is Ethernet, RMAC is radio, location, everywhere that it is. And now I've got a very large JSON file with all of this data. So now that I have this structure, uh, I can move on to looking for different things for that particular AP. So that's how to use NetMeco. Uh, in order to connect to a Cisco controller, an iOS controller, 9800 specifically, uh, and run the show AP summary command using NetMeco, um, and then transferring that to a text FSM template, and then having that AP information in a data file. Now, once again, you can write this just to a text file if you want. I wrote it to a JSON file because I want to have that data structure. Now that you have that data structure, you know, you don't have to keep going back to the controller to get that information. Now, if, if a controller gets changed or an AP gets added or deleted, obviously, you would need to go get that information again. But having it in that JSON format using the text FSM really allows you to start to work with that data. And you might be like, well, Todd, there's not a lot we can do with there. Well, there is, and I'm going to show you. But this is just kind of an intro to some other things that we're going to be doing with 9800 controllers. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, do me a favor, uh, hit a like down there, uh, and maybe subscribe, because I'm going to have a bunch more wireless stuff coming out for you um, in the near future. Not just Cisco, MIST, Arista, a bunch of different types of wireless. So, you know, I really appreciate you tuning in. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, uh, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks, nerds.